I uh, give the floor to Lawrence Daquan, Civil Society Working Group. Lawrence. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, Madam afternoon. Chairwoman. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, ancestors. Uh, I would just like to read a quote before I give my remarks. Without justice, there is no dignity, and without independence, there are no free men or women. Neither brutal assaults, nor cruel mistreatment, nor torture have ever led me to beg for mercy, for I prefer to die with my head held high, unshakable faith, and the greatest confidence in the destiny of my country rather than live in slavery and contempt for sacred principles. History will one day have its say. It will not be the history taught at the United Nations. It will not be the history taught in Washington, Paris, Brussels, however, but the history taught in the countries that have rid themselves of colonialism and its puppets. Africa will write its own history, and both the north and south of the Sahara, it will be a history full of glory and dignity. Rest in peace, Patrice Lumumba. It's, it's important for me to begin with the assassinated Congolese leader, Patrice Lumumba, because his murder is known as the first United Nations peacekeeping mission. Unfortunately, 62 years later, we are now here asking for the United Nations and former colonial governments to finally acknowledge our humanity. It seems that many of our ancestors accomplished more with less, and due to this apparent fact, I'm still trying to figure out what Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, Winnie Mandela, Ella Jo Baker, Claudia Jones, and others would have did with the internet. Can we finally set the record straight Whereas Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle learned at the feet of Africans, Westphalian states such as the United States, United Kingdom, France, and others use the tools created by enslaved and colonized individuals, and the world continues to benefit from the effort, spirituality, sexuality, ingenuity, resilience, and labor of African women, children, and men. As France Fanon and many others pointed out, white settler colonialism is not merely about land. It is more about mind control. We need to decolonize every institution as well as ourselves if we truly seek to respect and protect the human rights of people of African descent. Although the continent was nominally decolonized, neoliberalism is rampant around the world, which maintains the racial hierarchical order that is purely based on social constructions. Gender, race, and even the notion of time are all social constructs that have been imposed on Africans over the last several centuries. Sovereignty and economic development go hand in hand. Similar to how U.S. slavery and colonialism in Africa worked in concert to strip, of us, strip us of our spirituality, families, and natural self-determination. Will advocating for the human rights of Africans be sufficient in a world where the World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, and other Bretton Woods institutions don't allow African states to set the terms of the sale of their own pro global products? Importing refined agricultural products while businesses in former colonial states profit and own manufacturing companies are a few examples. It's important that we hold ourselves accountable as institutions so we are not merely engaging in performative stage play and political theater. Rhetoric about Pan-Africanism is baseless if we view ourselves through the colonial paradigm of inferiority. Thank you. As Emil Cabral introduced the notion of class suicide, it's more relevant for Thank us you. to help our brothers, sisters, and everyone today by removing our superiority complex that we subscribe to. I have a lot more to say, but thank you for your time. Thank you.